President Trump fired his defense secretary, Mark Esper, on social media yesterday. NBC News reported last week that Esper had already prepared a formal resignation letter since the Pentagon chief and the president had been at odds over several issues. For instance, Esper was working with Congress to rename military bases named after Confederate soldiers, a move the president opposes. And over the summer, Esper pushed back on sending active duty troops to put down protests and also distanced himself from Trump's photo op at St. John's Church. John Kelly, the former White House chief of staff, told The Washington Post that Esper, quote, made the decision to stay loyal to the law and the Constitution and paid the price. Speaking to the Military Times last week, Esper himself said, quote, who's going to come in behind me? It's going to be a real yes man. And then God help us. Joining us now, chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Democratic Congressman Adam Smith of Washington. He was reelected last Tuesday to represent Washington's 9th Congressional District. Also with us, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, retired four-star Navy Admiral James Stavridis. He is chief international security and diplomacy analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. Um, Admiral Stavridis, um, God help us. Is that, um, is that over the top? Is that, uh, or are we in unknown territory? Um, I personally, I, I feel... I feel the president um, is at risk of doing something incredibly destructive to the United States uh, in the next month or two. Am I being overly hysterical? Well, no, you're not being overly hysterical, but we all ought to be concerned. And, you know, I spent two years as a senior military assistant, as a three star to the Secretary of Defense at the time, Don Rumsfeld. So I know that position extremely well. And I'll give you three reasons we ought to be worried. One is tactical. Every week, the Secretary of Defense receives an orders book. He's the one who actually makes the decisions to deploy units overseas. Those are highly technical decisions. You can't just jump into the middle of it uh, without doing damage to how we uh, deploy our troops. Number two, operationally, at the level of theater, this is where the Secretary of Defense thinks about well, should that aircraft carrier battle group go to the Arabian Gulf or should it go to the Western Pacific to the South China Sea? And then finally, strategically, um, there are some pretty obvious concerns here, starting with, and not to get at the really dark end of the spectrum, but the nuclear codes. Um, this is not trivial. It is complicated. You don't want to just throw somebody into it. And I'll close by saying the SecDef appointee, I guess, um, has a decent combat record as a colonel. Uh, he served in a couple of low-level posts in the Pentagon to pull him up to be the Secretary of Defense on a moment's notice it would be like a baseball team, not going to the bullpen. It'd be like going down to a, a high school uh, ball team and saying, hey, send that pitcher up here to the major league. So, yeah, we ought to be pretty concerned about it. Chairman Smith, you head up the Armed yeah. Services Committee in the House. Uh, it appears that the crime of Defense Secretary Esper was not being 100 percent loyal at all times to Donald Trump, which is what he requires. So what are your concerns from your position? And also, should we be thinking, as some have reported, about FBI Director Ray, even CIA Director Haspel, and the security of their jobs? Well, I think Admiral Stavridis is absolutely correct. This, this is an incredibly destructive act by the president. Uh, there's no point in this. I mean, there's like 70 days left in the Trump administration. Uh, there's no going to be major policy changes. If he's unhappy with Secretary Esper, that's one thing if he's going to be continuing his term, but he's not. We need continu continuity within the job. But do we move Secretary Esper at this point? Number one, it gives all the concerns that Admiral Stavridis Stav just laid out. Now, I, I will say that Acting Secretary Miller, I spoke to him yesterday. He's not a bad guy. 
Um, now, Admiral Stavridis is also correct. He's not qualified for this position, but he sounds like, you know, he's going to do his best and he's working with Chairman Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But it's still a destructive act because it places uncertainty at DOD in a way that is very dangerous. And the second point is what, what Meek has been alluding to and what you just alluded to. What's next? Yeah. Uh, well, what else is President Trump going to do uh, that's going to place our country in jeopardy? And let's be 100 percent clear on this. There is no question of the outcome of this election. I've been through a lot of elections. I, I, yeah, I've seen very close elections. We all have. Um, they happen. There's no question of the outcome here. What President Trump and Mitch McConnell, the Republicans, are doing here is unbelievably destructive to this country and completely wrong. There, there's no legitimate challenge to this election. So you're beginning to see in, in the firing of Mark Esper the damage that President Trump could do if the Republicans continue to support these destructive efforts. So it's a big problem and it's worrisome to think about what else could happen. Sure. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.